Thank you for the introduction. Hi, everyone. I'm glad to present you our latest work on food and human microbiome. I'm Nicolo Carlino. Today, uh, we'll talk, uh, as, uh, as Eduardo said, about our latest paper titled Expro Microbial Diversity from 2500 Food Metagenomes, a link with the human microbiome. So microbes are very important in food, uh, both for the production, just think uh, about all the fermented products, but also for its safety, uh, such as in case for pathogens or storage bugs. For this reason, it has been studied since many, many years and lately also metagenomically. But food metagenomic studies focus mainly on few food, uh, food types you, or uh, singular species like the, the pathogens and usually with uh, a low sample size. For this reason, the, a global picture of food microbiome is still missing and it still remains largely unexplored. But it is not all important per se, but also in light of its, uh, 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 its relation with the human microbiome. In fact, we know that there is a strong relationship between human microbiome and diet, but usually this connection has been studied uh, considering diet as a group of nutrients and its abiotic components, and still only preliminary results show some kind of influence. So still we don't know uh, how and if these two environments has some, um, some connection and especially if there is some kind of transmission from food to humans. From this reason, we started our work building curated food metagenomic data, which is a, a public food metagenomes database, which collects over 2,500 samples, 600 of which came from publicly available studies and almost 2,000 of which came from the European project called MASTER and were newly sequenced and released in this work. For all these samples, we collected and curated metadata, uh, giving birth also to a simple but efficient food ontology uh, composed of three hierarchical levels, uh, in our case, 15 food categories, 107 food types, and 358 food subtypes. Uh, dairy, uh, dairy foods were by far the most sequenced uh, food types, but thanks also to the master collaboration, we, we, we've been able to sequence uh, new foods such as fermented seeds and non-fermented meats. In addition, these two uh, sources of data allowed us to have a, a global picture of the food microbiome, having samples from over 50 countries and five different continents. So dealing with what we consider an understudied environment, such as food, we started our analysis with an assembly-based pipeline, and we constructed almost 11,000 mugs after quality check. We then put this mug in context of our 1 million genome database um, and cluster all these genomes together according solely on their genomic distance. This gave us the opportunity to give to all these species level genome beans or SGBs a taxonomic level. And we recognize in our food mugs over 1,000 different species. Among these, almost half were unknown, and 320 of which were unknown food. That means they were reconstructed for, for the first time in this work and never reconstructed from any other environment. And therefore, they represent putative novel species that we found in foods. Overall, we reconstructed uh, mags from species from 13 different phyla, but the vast majority belong actually to the six classes here represented. Uh, we expanded by far the genomic diversity of food associated species uh, with known species, um, more than doubling their availability with respect to, what, uh, to the instances that were already available in public databases such as NCBI, but also with the known species, which increased the um, phylogeny branch length of this uh, tree of life of food microbiome by 95%. Um, and now you may think that these uh, unknown species were found all in uh, um, exotic or uh, very strange food, but actually we reconstructed USGBs and UFSGBs from half of the sample is CFMD. And uh, these samples, these unknown, uh, were found in all food categories, but non fermented fish and 59 different food types, including cheese and dairies, which uh, as I said are by far the most sequenced foods. Importantly, these unknown were half, uh, half of these unknown were an assigned at the genus level, meaning they had a very high distance from 
uh, any isolated genome so far. We went on with our analysis with a sensitive taxonomic profiling uh, used, uh, using Metaflan. We found that food communities are relatively poor with respect to the humans one, but still host dozens of species. Uh, we also found that uh, alpha diversity was really changing across food categories with a general trend with the, uh, where the non-fermented categories were richer than the fermented ones, highlighting the selection processes that fermentation has on the microbial communities. So beta diversity still underlined that there is a strong clustering due to food categories, types, and subtypes, which was further confirmed by statistical analysis, covariate analysis, and also machine learning approach. And this was uh, uh, as far as whole community, but we tested also the, all the 3,632 SGBs for their differential abundance across food categories, finding strong statistical significant signals uh, which taken collectively built what we call the food specific core microbiome. Finally, we introduced in our pipeline almost 20,000 samples from stool and oral uh, taken from the database CMD, which underwent the same analysis uh, of the foods. And we found that um, food are relatively more um, variegated than the, the human ones, we, um, taking into account the global. A uh, number of species and take into account also the uh, very large difference uh, in size of the two databases. Nevertheless, we found more than 1,000 SGBs with, that were found in both environments. Of course, uh, in order to filter out uh, false positive yeast and cross contamination, we define what we call the food prevalent and human prevalent species. We also uh, found that food prevalent species were constantly present across all uh, human samples, but this was largely um, depending on the category, on the type of the host. And uh, this was uh, clear when, uh, um, when we considered the re ratio richness and the cumulative relative abundance of the food prevalent species. This was also, um, highlighting that half of the communities in uh, babies were actually uh, formed by uh, food prevalent species, whereas adult gut microbiome can be explained among 3% by uh, food prevalent species. We next focused on the 43 common prevalent species, so those found prevalent both in food and in human to be uh, the target of our next analysis. We found a higher overlap between uh, fermented categories and stool, um, and stool samples, probably reflecting both the high uh, sample size of these groups, but also the similar anaerobicity of the environment. We studied all these uh, species at the strain level because we didn't have a, a clear connection between, between these two um, types of samples, meaning we didn't have uh, dietary patterns connecting foods and humans. So we, uh, for all these species, we went to the strain level, highlighting a large number of clades where uh, there was either strains typically and uh, belonging only to food samples like, like this from water kefir or this from cheese, which also included uh, some isolates, possibly reflecting an industrial origin, origins. But also we found a lot of uh, branches where strains, both from humans and foods, were placed really, really tight together. So um, highlighting a very uh, high genomic similarity, similarity and therefore um, highlighting possible transmission events. So to conclude, we ran the first population-wide strain level study of both food and human microbiomes. And uh, the results will release the uh, large public database called CFND with uh, over 2,500 food metagenomes with relative curated meta metadata, taxonomic profiles, MAGs, and also functional profiles here not shown. With, with our over 10,000 MAGs, we expanded by far the genomic diversity of food associated species. And with a more sensitive taxonomic profiling, we identified food specific markers and food core microbiomes. When we uh, included also the human microbiomes, we found that food prevalent species are a non-negligible part in the human microbiomes. And when we went deep further, the strain level, we highlighted a lot of potential instances of food to gut microbiome transmission. This was found also for eukaryotes, which I didn't show for a matter of time, but you can find 
uh, more info in our recently published paper and also in our database uh, available publicly in uh, GitHub. I want to thank all the Segata Lab, past and current members, Professor Pasoli, and the whole European collaboration from Master. Thank you very much for your attention.